Look at that sun, man. The sun is amazing. It's amazing. It's 7 p.m. We got over two hours of sun left, man. It's at 7 p.m. Right? I'm wearing my pink sunglasses. This building complex is very close to that uh, that train. Or you could say that the train is very close to the the building complex. So, but hey, I used to live really close to a train as well. So speaking of trains and words that rhyme with trains, like pains. Yesterday, I was at the dentist to get my implant installed. You know, so some scraping around the jawbone and stuff like that, and some drilling, and then installing a piece of metal in there. So I'm partly metal now, I have metal in me. I know a lot of girls who have wood in them, but I have metal in me now. Right? Probably a titanium screw, I don't know, I don't know. So, on the way back, I met up with Petra, and as we were riding over the bridge, bumpy bridge. I was doing maybe, you know, 20 miles an hour. The, the legal limit is 12 miles an hour. The legal limit for electric unicycles in Sweden is 12 miles an hour. When we got over that bridge, there was a cop. There was a cop there on his motorcycle with his tiny, tiny blue lights flashing. Look, look, look at this. Tiny, tiny blue lights flashing. I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess he's undercover or something. I don't know. And he looked bothered. And of course he looked bothered. He just saw two assholes riding, you know, at twice the speed limit on a bridge, which is a shared bicycle and pedestrian path with a white line as a separator. Now the pedestrians don't really respect that white line, you know, just don't put it on me. But anyway, he said, you know, sort of like asking, those are pretty fast, aren't they? And I said, yeah, they're pretty fast. And he said, like, they can do up to 50 kilometers an hour. I said, they can do more than that. They can do more than that. They can do 70, they can do 80, right? But you can put tilt back on them so they don't go too fast. And then he says, you can put what? And I said, okay, never mind. I will spare you the technicalities. Yes, they are very fast and they are way beyond the allowed legal speed limit. And he's like, so what would that be classified as? And I said, if it had a speed limit, he, well, before he asked what it would be classified as, he says, the speed limit on bike lanes is 25 kilometers an hour. And I said to him, I recognize that these things are fast. The speed limit, according to the Swedish law, for a self-balancing electric vehicle is 20 kilometers an hour. And there is no speed limit on bike paths. The speed limit on bike paths is the speed limit that is for the adjoining road. So, for the road that runs parallel to the bike path you're on. If it's 30, it's 30. If it's 50, it's 50. But the override is still that the speed limit is 20 kilometers an hour for this electric unicycle. Now, that won't stop a bicycle from doing 50 because a bicycle is allowed to do 50. If you're allowed to do 50 on the road that runs parallel, then you're allowed to do 50 on the bike path. Now, how it's worse that I'm doing on an electric unicycle, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've done 50 on my bicycle and my bicycle isn't even made for doing 50. Because it's a cross-country carbon fiber mountain bike and it's a hardtail, right? So you got to do some pedaling. You got to do some pedaling. I've hit 63 kilometers an hour on that thing. It started to vibrate. So he said, so what would this be classified as? And I said, it would be classified as an uninsured motorcycle. And he asked me, do you have a motorcycle license? And I said, no, I don't have a motorcycle license, but I am aware of the rules of the road. And I am aware of the rules of the sidewalk. And I'm aware of the rules of the pedestrian paths and the bike paths. Because I have to be aware of those rules because I am riding an electric unicycle. An electric unicycle has one wheel. And getting it up to speed is not free. And riding it is not free. It requires practice and it requires being at risk. And I said, I totally understand your position. I understand that you stopped me. And he said, well, you know, if we would 
if, if it would be another cop, he might stop you and then he'd say, you were going really fast there. And then he'd take the wheel and then he'd analyze the wheel and he'd take the wheels in for analysis. And I said, I wouldn't blame. I wouldn't blame you. I would, I would expect nothing less because you're merely doing your job and you're supposed to do your job. And I said, this is an uninsured vehicle, right? This is an uninsured motorcycle that I'm riding without a, without a driver's license, without a motorcycle driver's license. Now, am I riding it as a motorcycle? No, I'm not. Can I ride it as a motorcycle? I guess I can ride it as a slow motorcycle. Do motorcycles in general have a top speed of 70 kilometers an hour? I wouldn't say so. And he said, you know, well, one day, one day one of you guys is gonna run into a pedestrian and you're not gonna have any insurance and then there's gonna be a problem. You know, and I said, hey, I totally agree. I totally agree. Because I didn't want to bust his balls. Because I didn't want to tell him, you know, that a cyclist can do the same thing. And not only that, cyclists do that. That's what cyclists do. Cyclists kill pedestrians. Electric unicycle riders are not killing pedestrians. So the funny thing is that you're trying to put, uh, turn it into a, what kind of vehicle did the pedestrian get hit by? I'm sure this can be solved in better ways. I'm sure this can be solved by, did I lose the thought? No. This can be solved by separating pedestrians from cyclists. Because we don't need to protect pedestrians from electric unicycles in particular. We need to protect pedestrians from themselves. Because pedestrians walking on bike paths is sort of, sort of, sort of like pedestrians walking on roads, except there are much slower vehicles. Now, whether that vehicle is a bicycle or an electric unicycle or something else, that's a different story. The cockroach is over there. Yeah. And I told him, I said, you know, I know everyone in the group, so as you can see, we're not going around speeding. It's not like I'm dressed for work. Hell, I'm not even wearing a helmet. And he's like, eh, touche, touche. But sometimes I do wear a helmet and sometimes I do rip at 70 and sometimes I will actually come very close to hitting a pedestrian like I did the other day. And now would I have done that on my bicycle? Yes, I would have. I'll be waiting here. Yep. Okay. So Daniel's on his way. I was thinking about which jacket to wear. But man. Man. This latest edition of the black on black with a three panel hood. It's just too good. It's just too good. It's a little tiny stitch in perfection. Ah. Ah. So yeah, Daniel, Pietra and I are going to cruise. I would need to buy some Velcro. I'll see if I can just slip, slip that thought in there. I'm going to Bolchika. But you know, I, I, I sort of felt it in my heart, you know, that that policeman, just just like he looked bothered, he looked bothered and he looked like he felt that he was going to say something wrong, but he knew that it was his job, you know, because we're just out on electric unicycles riding around and having fun. You know? it's not, we're not going around terrorizing anybody. And now we're trying to follow a certain law. And the law is that the max speed is 20 kilometers an hour. I mean, if the, if the max speed was 40 kilometers an hour, which it would be for a bicycle, then he wouldn't have stopped me. He stopped me because of an, a, a law that says that I have to ride at 20 kilometers an hour. I mean, hell, if I would be riding at 20 kilometers an hour on that EXN, every bicycle would be stuck behind me. I ride better than cyclists. I, I, I don't go spreading out all over the place, riding side to side with other riders and blocking the path, you know. I don't go grazing people this close unless it's really by accident, you know, and, and bad circumstances. But I, I don't do it out of spite. 
cyclists are passive aggressive and they do that stuff out of spite. I'm not saying all cyclists are bad, you know. I'm just saying they're not perfect. So what would happen if we solved the problem about pedestrians getting hit by cyclists and then give electric unicycle riders the same perks, the exact same perks as bicycle riders. Bicycle riders are allowed on the car road. Bicycle riders are allowed on the bicycle lane. Bicycle riders must obey the speed limit if there is a speed limit. If there is not a speed limit, then that limit will usually be 70. Bicycle riders are not allowed on the highway. I don't expect to be allowed on the highway. Bicycle riders do not need a driver's license. I do not expect to need a driver's license. Bicycle riders are allowed to ride on the road with cars and not have a driver's license. I do not expect to need a driver's license. So why the worst treatment? Why? I don't mind being stopped. I would have loved him to stay and for us to talk some more. But he had other things to do. I would love to go to the police station and speak to the police and tell them about electric unicycles, about how they work, and challenge any one of them to get on my EXN and go to 70 kilometers an hour. Go and wear all the armor in the world and go and hit 70 kilometers an hour. And then think about what happened to the black cobra, right? Who falls at 32 kilometers an hour, 19 miles an hour, and busted up his shoulder to help and hurt himself badly. Armor or no armor, right? When you go down, you go down. When I went down at 18 miles an hour on my Nikola, man, my mind was scarred for a month. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I've done a little over 20,000 miles on electric unicycles now. And this is the first encounter that I had with a cop where the cop, you know, sort, sort of just like shook his finger at me, you know. He wasn't against me. He wasn't on my side. He just wanted to say, you know, sort of like, you know, what you're doing isn't really legal, you know, and I told him, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. He was grateful. He was grateful. He said, you seem to, to know what you're doing, you know, besides saying that you know what you're doing, meaning that you know that you're breaking several laws because doing, you know, reckless driving on a non-registered vehicle without a driver's license, non-insured. Said you also actually seem to know what you're what you're doing and what you're talking about because when I've stopped people, they just say that I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know you couldn't do that. I didn't know you couldn't do that. Right? I know I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't, but I still will. Right? Until I can't. They wanna take the wheel, you know, they can take the wheel. If they wanna, if they wanna find me, that's fine. Find me, man. Find me. The twenty thousand miles I've done are worth it. Maybe I'll see him again. He was a nice guy. For like ten or fifteen years younger than me. I'm old, man. I'm old. I'm not always easy to talk to. But I was nice, I was nice. But I try to be sure. I try to be sure about the things that I speak of. I try to be well informed. Because I got nothing but time. Nothing but time. Huh?